I am going to do the adjustment and I will start with the income adjustment. Only income and must be recognized in the income statement. Income and always falls within the current financial year. Here we are simply applying the matching principle which requires income to be recognized in the financial year in which it is earned, even, even though it has not been received. So income is what was earned and not what has been received. Now, here's one example here. The entity that's out of its unused building to earn passive income. The building is let out to a tenant on the 1st of March, 2022 and the tenant is required to pay 2,000 rand per month. Rand for February 2023 was not received. At the end of the financial year, which is the 28th of February 2023, a total of 24,000 will be recognized as income, even if the rent received was only for 11 months. If you take that 2,000 and you multiply it by 11, you will get 22,000 rand. That is the rent that we have received which was recorded in the crj and rent income is reflected at that twenty two thousand, which is incorrect because that twenty two thousand is what we have received for 11 months it is not what we have earned for 12 months what we earn is us providing property to the tenant for 12 months which will result in income amounting to 24,000 rand. Note that 24,000 rand is earned and this amount must be recognized as income. Note that only 22,000 rand was received, meaning that 2,000 is still receivable from the tenant. That 2,000 that is receivable from the tenant will be recognized as an asset. It is income receivable or you recognize it as accrued income. Now, income to be recognized shall be 24,000 rand, and the 2,000 rand shall be recognized as accrued income since it has been earned but it has not yet been received. It is owed to us because we have provided property for 12 months, but we only got paid for 22, I mean, for, 12, for, for 11 months, which is 22,000 rand. In our bank, we have 22,000 rand instead of 24,000 rand. We are still owed the 2,000 rand. The 2,000 rand that we still owed, as I've said, it is our accrued income. Accrued income, it is income that we have earned, but we have not yet received. You can call it accrued income or income receivable. It will be recorded in trade and other receivable. The amount of rent income given in the trial balance represents the amount of rent that was received. It doesn't represent what has been earned. For you to earn that income, you need to have performed the service to be entitled to that income. Here's an example here. So remember what I've just said to you, any extra from pre-adjustment trial balance, we have rent income of 33,000, we have commission income of 11,200. Those two amounts are our income, but it represents money that has been received. They don't represent money that has been earned, and that is a problem. Now, when we read adjustments, it says that part of the building has been led to a tenant since the beginning of the financial year. The rent for February 2022 has not been received. That means that 33,000 rent, it's only for 11 months. We haven't received rent for February 2022. And when it comes to commission, that 11,200 is not the full commission income that we have earned because we still have 8,800 accrued in respect of commission income. Now, how do we record this? The key is to start with your financial year. Our financial year here will run from the 1st of March, 2020 until 
the 28th of February, 2022. And that will be a period of 12 months. However, note that our rent income here is 33,000. That 33,000 rent, we can't say it is income. It just represents what has been received. We let this property to a tenant since the beginning of the financial year. They've been staying at that property for 12 months. However, we did not receive rent for February, which is the last month of the financial year. We are owed for that last month. Now, as I said, the financial year was still on the 1st of March 2021. So we received X, 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 X until January. But we received nothing for February. Our financial year is for 12 months. We provided property for 12 months. But we did not receive money for the 12th month. So when you take these axes and you multiply them by 11, they should give you what was received, which is 33,000. To determine X, you will take 33,000 and divide it by 11, and that will give you 3,000 per month. So per month, we were getting paid 3,000 rand, but we are missing the 3,000 rand for February. That 3,000 rand for February represents our income. Our income should be 36,000 rand and not 33,000 rand. So we need to increase our rent income. But this 3,000 rand that was not received, it is what we call income receivable or accrued income. Accrued income is an asset. Therefore, we will debit accrued income and we will credit the rent income. It's because income increases on the credit side. So we are increasing our rent. It will move from 33,000 rent to 36,000 rent. After this adjustment, our rent will be recognized at a correct value. Let us move to the next one which talks about commission. Commission received is 11,200. We are still owed 8,800 for commission. That 8,800 is accrued income. We have earned it, but we have not yet received it. Therefore, because it's accrued income, we will debit accrued income and we will credit commission income. Now, instead of doing these entries separate like I've done here, you rather credit rent income and commission income and debit accrued income as a total, which will be the sum of the 3,000 and 8,800 and that will give you 11,800. I am going to ignore the general ledger for now. I am going to move straight to the financial statements. For our income statement, our rent income is currently sitting at 33,000 rent. We need to increase it by 3,000 rent so that our rent can be valued at the correct value, which is 36,000 rent. Similarly, with our commission income, it is valued at 11,200. We are still missing 8,800. 11,200 plus 8,800 will give you a total commission income, which will be 20,000 rand. In trade and other receivables, so our accrued income will be 3,000 rand plus 8,800, and that will give us 11,800. Let us move to this classwork here. Here we've got rent income of 99,000. 
our financial year end is 28th of February, 2022. So that 99,000 rand, as I've said, this is a pre-adjustment for our balance. The balances here, when it comes to income, they represent money that we have received. For rent, we received 99,000. For commission income, we received 11,200. The adjustment says that part of the building has been let out to a tenant since the beginning of the financial year. The rent for February, 2022 has not been received. Similar to the previous one, that 99,000, it's income that has been received only for 11 months. We're missing one month, which is February. To get this missing month, we are going to take 99,000 rand and divide it by 11. It'll give us our monthly rand, which will be 9,000 rand. So for February, we're missing 9,000 rand. That 9,000 rand will be accrued income. Accrued income is an asset. So we'll debit accrued income and credit rent income by that 9,000 rand. When it comes to commission income, they said here, commission income is 11,200. And under adjustment, it says only 80% of commission income was received. And remember the statements I've been saying ever since I started this video. The pre-adjustment trial balance income that you see in the pre-adjustment trial balance, it represents amounts that have been received. So that 11,200 is what has been received. But it is not 100% of what we are supposed to have received. So that 11,200 is only 80% of the total that we are supposed to receive. We are still owed 20%. That 20% that is still missing, that was not received, we call it accrued income. We will debit accrued income by that 20,000 rand and credit commission income to increase it to make sure that it moves from 80% commission income to 100% commission income. As I've said, in both cases, we will debit accrued income. For rent income, we will credit 9,000 rand. For commission income, we will credit 20%. So how do we get that 20%? What we know is that that 11,200 is when we take the commission income, times it by 80%, it'll give you that 11,200. If you want the commission income, you will divide both sides by 80%. 11,200 divided by 80% will give you 14,000. Our total commission income is supposed to be 14,000. Of this 14,000, 20% was not received. It was not paid to us. And that 20% will give us 2,800, which is the commission income that is still accrued. For your accrued income, you will add the 9,000 with the 2,800. It'll give you a total accrued income of 11,800. I am going to skip the general ledger again here. I'm gonna move straight to the financial statements. How do we show this in the financial statements? For your rent income, you will take that 99,000 rent, add to the 9,000 rent. It'll give you a total rent income of 108,000 rent. For commission income, you will take that 11,200. I would normally multiply that by 100 and divide it by 80. You will still get the same answer. Multiply by what you want, divide by what you have. And that will give you 14,000 rand. The 9,000 rand and the 2,800, they represent accrued income. As I've said, accrued income will be recorded in trade and other receivables, which will be made up of rent not yet received, as well as commission income not yet received. It'll be 
11,800 in total. Now let's get deep into rent income adjustments. Rent, it is the amount earned by letting a piece of property. It is recognized as other operating income since it is not the income earning activity. It is income is offset that we end by letting our property. When the tenant has stayed for the full year but has not paid for the whole year, rent income will be the amount receivable for the whole year. This amount will include the amount not yet received. Rent income not yet paid or basically received must be recognized as a current asset in trade and other receivables. Sometimes rent can be deferred. When rent is deferred or received in advance, it means that we have let property for 12 months, but we already received rent for 13 months, meaning that our rent income will be only for 12 months. The extra month will be what we call income received in advance. Deferred income results when we have received money for income that we have not yet earned. So we haven't done or performed the service to be entitled to earn that amount of income. As I've said here, when the tenant has already paid for part of the following year's rent, only rent income earned, that is the one that falls within the current financial year will be recognized as income. The portion of rent received in advance must be subtracted from the amount reflected in the trial balance since it has not earned. Remember what I've just said about the amounts in the trial balance. They represent income received. And income received does not equate to income earned. Income earned is the service that we have performed during the financial year that entitled us to say that we can claim income from whoever we provided a service for. Let us look at this example one here. Our rent income there is 20,515. The financial year runs from the 1st of November, 2021 until the 31st of October 2022. For the whole year, we have received that 20,550. And that 20,550 is for, it was received for 13 months. They say rent was increased by 10% on the 30th of April, 2022. As I've said, rent income will be only for 12 months. The 13th month, which will be the first of all, which will be the 30th of November, 2022, rent for that month is not supposed to have been recognized as income, but unfortunately it is in that 20,515. So we need to take it out. The problem is that we can not just take that 20,515 divided by 13 because our rent was not the same for the entire year. During the year, to be precise, on the 30th of April, 2022, it was increased by 10%. The beginning of the financial year will be the 1st of November, 2021. It will run up to the 31st of October, 2022.
that is a period of 12 months. Rent was increased on the 30th of April, 2022. So I will start counting the increase from May because it was increased at the end of April. It'll increase up to the 30th of November since we received it up to November. So one month of that total rent amount received falls outside the financial year. And we need to take it out. But we just can't take it out. We have to first find out how much will be rent for that month. Now, we don't know what rent was every month. We don't know how much was rent for the month of November, December, January, February, March, and April. That is one, two, three, four, five, six. So for those six months, we don't know what rent was. So we'll just say it is X. However, after those six months, for May, June, July, August, September, October, November, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. For those seven months, our rent has increased by 10%. So for those seven months, our rent will be X multiplied by 110%, which should give us our income of 20,550. We will still have six X, seven times X times 110. When you work with percentages, remember you're multiplying, all right? How did I get that 110? That 110 is that if our rent was at 100%, it was 100% X for six months. However, after, at the end of April, it was increased by 10%. That's how we got the 110%. That's how you work with percentage. Now, when you multiply, you multiply that with that. You multiply numbers first. So 7 times 110% will give you 7,7. ,7. We still have the variable x. Then you add the coefficient 6 plus 7,7. .7 will give you 13,7, if I'm not mistaken. Then you will divide both sides by 13,7. It will give you rent amount per month, which is 1,500. So rent per month was 1,500. For when? For November, December, January, February, March, April. But after April, it increased by 10%, so now it was at 110%. Meaning that for May, June, July, August per month, we were paying 1,650. Even for November, we were paying 1,650. That rent for November, we don't want it. It is included in the 20,550, so we need to take it out because it falls outside the financial year. We have received it, but we did we did not earn it. You can use the table method. It's pretty much the same as what I did, even though I don't like it. Before the change, it was 6, obviously. After the change, it will be 7 multiplied by 110%, which will give us 13,7 when you add them up. Then you're going to take your rent that you have. If you want rent per month before the increase or decrease, you're going to take the rent that you have in the trial balance divided by the 13,7 that we calculated above. It will give you your rent before the increase or decrease which is 1,500. Then you just have to increase it by 10%. To increase it by 10%, you 
just take 1,500, multiply it by 110%, it'll give you 1,650. We need to reduce our rent, so we'll debit rent income. Income decreases on the debit side. Then you credit income received in advance or deferred income, which is a liability. I will not do the general ledger again. I've just moved to the income statement. Our rent was sitting at 20,515. We need to reduce it by the rent that was received for November, which was 1,615. Our actual rent income should be 18,900. That 1,615 will be recorded in trading other payables as income received in advance. It is a liability. We have received it, but we haven't provided our tenant with a place to stay for the following year. So when they stay for November the following year, that's when we're gonna recognize it as income. It is a current liability for now. Now in example two, the financial year end is the 28th of February, 2022. Rent income is 12,350, which is what has been received. But they said that 12,360, it is not for 12 months. Instead, it is for 11 months. Then they say rent was decreased by 10% on the 30th of June, 2021. You need to draw your timeline as I've done there. The beginning of the financial year will be the 1st of March, 2021. It will run up to the 28th of February, 2022. And that is a period of 12 months. From July, our rent was no longer at 100%. It was now 810%. However, we did not receive rent for February because we provided property for, to this person for 12 months, but we only got paid for 11 months. So that one month that falls within the current financial year, we don't have it. Rent was X for March, April, May, June. We don't know how much it was, so we'll just say it's 4X. Thereafter, it was decreased by 10%. So it was no longer at 100% X. It was now at 90% X. 90% when a percentage, when there's a percentage decrease, you work from 100%, but here we minus the 10%. So meaning that after the 30th of June, rent was at 90%. So it'll be which month? So rent for July 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, but we did not receive this one here. So it's not included in there. So in essence, it's just 7. So rent will be 90% X for 7 months which will give us that 12,360. Seven times 90% will give us 6.3, which is added to 4, it'll give us 10.3. Now, in example 3, the rent was decreased by 10% on the 1st of March, 2021. 
then to get your x, you will just divide both sides by 10,3. And your x will be 1,200. Before the decrease rent was 1,200. After July, it was at 90%. It decreased by 10%. So our rent after July or after the 30th of June was now 1,080. Meaning that even for February, we were supposed to have received 1,080. And we're missing it. So that 12,360 is missing 1,080. I am going to show you an alternative method, a table method. So with your table method, you will just say 4 plus 7 times 90. You get your total. Then you take your rent that you have in the pre-adjustment 12 pounds. You divide it by that 10,3. It will give you the 1,200. And then you decrease it by 10%. It will give you 1,080. That 1,080, it is our accrued income. We have earned it, but we have not yet received it. Accrued income is an asset, so we debit it. Then we create our rent income as we need to increase it from 12,316 by 1,080. So that we can have rent for 12 months, not 11 months. I'm not going to do the general ledger again. I'm going to jump to the income statement where well, you're going to take the 12,350 you add to that rent for February, which was not received but earned. Our rent income for the entire year should be 13,440. The rent for the month of February, we are going to record it as accrued income in trading other receivables, which is just a current asset. Check this one out here. Here we've got rent amounting to 30,500. And they said rent was received for 13 months. Um, so we know that there's one month that was received in advance that we do not want. We did not earn rent for that month. So rent, the problem is, we can just take that 30,500 and divide it by 13. But the problem is that rent was increased by 100 rand on the 1st of September 2021. Our financial year will run from the 1st of March 2021 up until the 28th of February 2022, which will be our 12 months, but we will include March 2022 because we received rent for that month. Our rent increased from October by 100 rand. So from October, it's October, November, December, January, February, March. That is five months. October, November, December, January, February, March. It's actually six months. So for those six months, it was no longer X. It was at X amount plus 100 trend. Note that here we're not dealing with a percentage. It, it increased by an actual rent value. Um, so it was X all along for March, April, May, June, July, August, September, which is seven months. So for seven months, it was X. 
and thereafter it was x plus 100 trained. So we know that one month falls outside the financial year, and we want that month. So it was x for seven months, and it was x plus 100 for six months, which will give us that 3,500. Um, when we work with the rent base, we just add to, to what rent was supposed to have been. So to simplify this, you will just take 6 multiplied by x and take 6 multiplied by 100. You'll end up having 7x plus 6x plus 600 is equal to 30,500. Then you're going to take 7x plus 6x, which will give you 13x plus 600. And then you take that 600 or transpose it to the right-hand side. And you'll end up having 30,500 minus 600, which will give you 29,900. Then divide by 13, it'll give you 2,300 per month. So your rent from March, April, May per month, it was 2,300. But thereafter, it increased by 100 trains, so it was 2,400. Meaning that even for March, it was 2,400. An alternative method here was to use the table again. Um, well, it's not to use the table, you just use the formula. You will take the amount that is in the trial balance, add the decrease, and subtract the increase times the number of months after the increase. So here we have, 30,500, and there was an increase. So since there was an increase, you'll say minus 100 times 6. And you will divide this by the total number of months over which it was received, which was 13. This will give you 2,000. 300, which is the rent per month before the, the increase. After the increase, it'll be 2,400. So rent for March was 2,400. We need to reduce our rent income by the rent for March by debiting rent income and crediting income received in advance, which is a liability. We received it, but we did not earn it. In our income statement, we're going to take our rent income of 30,500 and minus 2,400, which will give us 28,100. That 2,400 is basically our income received in advance. Try this class week.
Now, we'll start with the beginning of the financial year, which will be the 1st of March, 2021. It will run up to up to April, 2022. So two months here we received in advance and there was a 200 rand increase on the 1st of march 2021 now this is how our timeline will go stop in feb which is 12 months and then we have two months that fall outside the financial year which is march 2022 as well as April 2022, meaning that our rent was X for six months, but thereafter it was X plus 200 for September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, which is eight months. So that 26,800 is made up of this formula. Break the bracket by multiplying by 8, you'll end up having 6x plus 8x plus 1,600 is equal to 26,800. Then take 26,800 minus 1,600. So 6x plus 8x will give you 14x. You'll end up having x is equal to 1,800. So our rent was 1,800 per month. And after September, it was 2,000 rand. So meaning that rent for March 2022 and April 2022 was 2,000 rand. So you will take 2,000 rand multiplied by 2, which will give you 4,000 rand. It means that 4,000 rand for both months was income received in advance. So it was 1,800 rand up until September. It was 2,000 and including March and April. That 2,000 rand, 4,000 rand in total falls outside the financial year, which is our income received in advance. You could have used the formula that I introduced earlier on. So the amount in the trial balance was 26,800. It was an increase, so you're going to subtract it. The increase was 200. You want to times it by 8 and then divide it by 14. which will give you 1,800 rand. After the increase, it will be 1,800 rand times as 200, which will give you 2,000 rand. So you will debit rent income and credit income received in advance by 4,000 rand. Because we receive rent for 14 months. Again, I'm going to jump the general ledger and move to the financial statements. In the financial statements, we're going to take our rent, which is 26,800 minus 4,000 rent, because 4,000 rent was received in advance. And that 4,000 rent will be recorded in trade and other payable as income received in advance. Check out last week too. Similarly here, our financial year will start on the 1st of March and will run up to the end of March 2022. It decreased by 300 on the 1st of September, so it'll be X minus 300 
not times, but minus 300 because it has an actual rain value. It was X for one, two, three, four, five, six months. And then it was X minus 300 for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because I'm going to include March 2022. Which should give us that 21,300. Seven times X will give us seven X. Seven times 300 will give us 2,100. That 2,100, when you transpose it to the right hand side, it will be positive. So you'll end up having 21,300 plus 2,100, which will give us 23,400. Divide that by 13, which is 13 months of rent, um, it will give us 1,800. So it means that it was 1,800 thereafter it became 1,500 after September because it decreased by 300. Even for March, it was 1,500. And we don't want that 1,500 for March because it's income received not funds. If you use this formula, it will be, I forgot the value, I forgot the value. It'll be 21,300. Because it's a decrease, you'll say plus 300. The months after the decrease were seven, so it'll be uh, plus 300 times seven divided by 30. which gives you 1,800, and then you just have to reduce it by 300 to get 1,500. So rent for March was 1,500. We need to reduce our rent income by 1,500, which is the rent for March. It was received but not earned. So rent in decreases on the debit side, and we're gonna have income received in advance on the credit side. For rent income, we're going to have 21,300. You minus that 1,500, which is still income received in advance. Let's try this one here. So the financial year will start on the 1st of March, 2021. It will run for 15 months. So it will run for three extra months. So it will be March, April, May, 2022. It was increased by 12% on the 1st of November. Meaning that it was X for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Then it was X times um, 112 for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which will give us that 57,024. Seven times one hundred and twelve will give us seven comma eight four x. Eight plus seven comma eight four x will give us fifteen comma eight four x, which is equals to fifty seven thousand and twenty four. Divide fifty seven thousand and twenty four by fifteen comma eight four x uh, will be three thousand six hundred. So after the increase, it'll be three thousand six hundred times one hundred and twelve percent which will be 4,032. Then you times it by three months that fall outside the financial year. And that will give you 12,096. That 12,096, it is our prepaid, not prepaid. It's not an expense, it's income. So it'll be income received in advance. To record it, will debit income received in advance. So you can use the table method, okay? I've discussed the table method, so you will, you should be able to get it right. Now, after the increase is supposed to be 4,000 and 30, Two, wasn't it 4032? Yes, 4032, not 3600. Then when you times it by three, it'll give you the 12,096. So you will debit rent income and credit income received in advance or deferred income. Again, I'm not going to do the general ledger. I'll move straight to the financial statement. But before I move to the financial statement, they said our commission income was three two thousand, but it is only commission for eleven months, so we have accrued income there. So you will take twenty two thousand divided by eleven to get commission income per month. So that will be your accrued income. So you will debit accrued income and credit our commission income as it's understated by 2,000 rand. For rent income, you will take 57,024 then subtract 12,096. That will give you 44,928. Commission income will be 22,000. You add the 2,000, it will give you 24,000. So the 12,096, we're going to record it in trading other payables as deferred income. By the 2,000, this 2,000, we're going to record it in trade and other receivables as accrued income. All of these were discussed earlier on in the video. Try this one out. Okay, um, I've got a past paper here as well, which is this one here.
I'll not do the general ledger. I'll just go to the financial statements. <clears throat> Let's try problem solving. It's a bit complex. You can try it out on your own. And here are the solutions. I'm going to do the general ledger. Just move to the financial statements, the income statement, and then those to the financial statement. Check last week six. Pretty similar to the previous ones we have done. Try it out. Interesting. I think I think I took this from my past paper. I remember this very well. I'm gonna move to this one here. Okay. I'm going to move to this one, which is adjustments relating to accrued expense. What is accrued expense? Expenses are incurred. So we recognize expenses when we incur them and not when they are paid. In the pre-adjustment trial balance, the expenses that will be given there will be the amounts we have paid towards those expenses. So we recognize expenses when we incur them and not when we pay them. As a result, if the expenses we have paid do not fully pay what we have incurred. It will result in us having what we call an accrued expense. Accrued expense arises when an expense has been incurred, but it has not yet been paid. Accrued expense is a liability. It is an expense we have incurred, but we have not yet paid as of say. Accrued expense will be recorded in trade and other payables as accrued expense or expense payable. Here's, for example, the telephone bill received for the year amounts 20000 However, the telephone expense in the trial balance is 17000 This means only 17000 was paid towards the telephone bill. The 20000 is the cost of airtime used to make calls as determined by the service provider. 
which can be Vodacom, MTN, Celsi, Telcom, Rain. This means that the entity paid less than what it used. The difference between these two amounts is 3,000 rand, which is an expense that has been incurred but not yet paid. The 3,000 rand we are going to record it as a good expense. By debiting the actual expense, telephone in this example, as it is understated by 2,000 rand, by 3,000 rand, and we credit accrued expense, which is a liability. It is a current liability. Let us look at this example here. The end of the financial year is the 28th of February, 2023. Telephone account is 132,600. That's how much we have paid towards the telephone account. Then they say the telephone account for February 2023 total in 12,500 had been received but not yet paid. That 12,500 is what we call accrued expense, which is a current liability. It means that 132,600 is what was paid and it is, means that it was underpaid by 12,000. Mm -hmm. The telephone incurred, expense incurred, will be 132,600 plus 12,500. So we need to increase our telephone. Expenses increase on the debit side by 12,500. And then credit our liability, which is what we still owe. And that will be 12,500. Because we have used airtime for February but we have not yet paid for it. So it's a liability from our side. In the financial statement, we are going to take that 132,600, increase it by 12,500, so that we get the actual telephone expense for the year, which will be 145,100. But that 12,500, it goes to trade in other payables since it is a liability. We still owe it. It's an expense we have incurred, but we have not yet paid for. Let's check this classwork here. Firstly, audit fees is at income or expense. It is an expense. So according to this, for audit fees, we have paid 1,250. And then I just say only 65% of audit fees was paid we need to record the outstanding amount. Now, it means that 81,250 that we have paid, it's only the 65% of the total audit fees. To get the outstanding audit fees, we will take that 81,250, times it by the outstanding percentage, which is 35, and divide it by what we have, which is the 65. This will give us the 35, which will be 43,250. This 43,250 is what we call accrued expense. So we'll increase our audit fees by 43,750 and recognize the current liability amounting to 43,750. In our financials, for audit fees, we'll take 81,250, increase it by 43,750 to take our audit fees up to the actual expense, which will be 125,000. But that 43,750 will be accrued expense, will be recorded in trade and other payables as such. It's a liability.
it is a current liability. Try this one out. Very, very interesting, this one. Um, as I've said, they say the company has two directors who were appointed in 2019. A third director was appointed on 1 October 2022. The directors all at the same monthly fee. Directors' fees during the financial year have been recorded, but one director has already been paid for March and April 2023. So now it means we paid one director in advance. So it is not an accrued expense. Instead, when we pay an expense in advance, it means we paid more than what we incur. The difference is what we call a prepaid expense. We will deal with it later on. But here was just to catch those that were not paying attention. Um, that I just used to accrued expense, accrued expense, just because the topic is accrued expense. And accrued expense is what we have paid is actually less than what we incurred. A prepaid expense will result when what we have paid is more than what we have actually incurred, which is the case in this scenario. You had to be careful here. You had to draw your timeline and draw the timeline based on the story that you're told. So we have three directors that we, we know. One director was appointed on the 1st of October, right? So two directors worked for 12 months. Uh, one director only worked for um, October, November, December, January, February for five months. And then one director as well was paid for two months in advance. 
So in total, that will give us our director's fees of 2 million and 15, and you just have to solve for X. Meaning that each director was paid 65,000 rand. So you're gonna take the 65,000 rand, times it by the two months that fall outside the financial year, which is March 2023 and April 2023. And that is what we call a prepaid expense. A prepaid expense is an asset, so we will debit it and then credit our director's fees expense, which will be 150,000. When we record this, our director's fees will be 2,015,000 minus that 130,000. 130,000 will be recorded in trade and other receivables as prepaid expense. Try this one. So here our security cost will be 104,500. They said cost have remained unchanged for the year. So this is what we have paid. Um, and then they say cost have remained unchanged for the year, but the invoice for February has not been paid. So there we have accrued expense. So you're gonna take that one on four form, 500 and divide it by 11 to get the outstanding month of February, which will be 9,500. That 9,500 is what we call accrued expense. So we will debit our security expense, security cost by 9,500 and credit our accrued expense, 9,500. In the financial statements, we will take 104,500 minus 9,500. I mean, plus 9,500 because it's accrued expense. One month was outstanding. It'll give you 114,000. But 9,500 becomes an accrued expense. It will be recorded in trade and other payables. Try this one out.
So here they say we had grant expense of 636, which is what we have paid. This is not income, guys, it's an expense. So note that this is rent expense. So that's what we have paid, not what we have received. Then they say rent for February was not paid. Rent was increased by 4,680. The principles do not change. You draw the financial year and you check when the increase happened, which is in October. So it was 7x. After October, it was x plus because it increased by forgot the value now, it increased by 4,680. So it was increased by, it was X plus 4,680 for, um, okay, it took me to something else. For October, November, December, January, which is four months. So it'll be four times X plus 4,680, which will give us 636,480. Then to solve for X here, you'll end up dividing by 11, which will be 56,160. This is before the increase. To get the amount after the increase, you will add 4,680, and it'll end up giving you 60,840. That 60,840 is what we call an accrued expense. Basically, we are going to debit our rent expense and credit our accrued expense by 60,840. In our financials, from rent expense, we will increase it by 60,840, which also becomes an accrued expense, which is a liability. All right. Um, that will be it for now. Um, in the next videos, I'll start working from insurance adjustments, just to give you a preview of what we will be dealing with. All right, um, that's it from me for today until we do the next video. Khotsum.